most women thought they would never see the day when men would be taking birth control pills. But believe it or not, that day is finally in sight. Scientists in Australia say they are closer than ever to developing a male oral contraceptive. This is coming from a study conducted by researchers at Melbourne's Monash University. Through extensive testing on mice, researchers discovered that they can block two of the proteins responsible for controlling the transport of sperm through the reproductive system. And the investigators say that blocking these proteins had no long-term effects on the sexual behavior or function of the male mice. So that means this could be the answer to achieving temporary male infertility. To talk a little bit more about this developing research, I'm joined by Elaine Listener, Director of the Male Contraception Information Project. Elaine, thanks so much for joining me. You're welcome. Pleasure to be here. So some women hearing the results of this study are going to say, you know, we're in 2013. How come scientists haven't been able to develop a male birth control already? Can you talk about why it's more challenging to do this for males versus females? Yeah, well, it, it's not about the biology. It's about politics. It's about money. It's about sociology. Um, a lot of times you hear, well, it's a lot easier to stop one egg than millions of sperm. Well, that's true if you're taking the same approach in men as has been taken in women, which is to try to shut things off hormonally. Um, that is difficult, but men are different than women, and the sperm all flow through a small tube called the vas deferens. So this approach that's been in the news and some other approaches try to get a lot more targeted and stop the sperm in that one spot. Now that said, so it's not rocket science scientifically, but the problem is there hasn't been the scale of investment necessary. There have been a lot of studies like this one in the news where someone got a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars to try something out and it worked. But once you have that, where do you go? Now it takes several million dollars to actually take the steps to get something all the way to market. Right, and it's, that's a, it's indeed, right. There. I think that money is for sure going to be the challenge going forward. But I understand that you are familiar with some other kinds of contraception uh, for males out there right now. Can you talk about a couple of those? Yeah, there are a couple methods that are much more far along. There's one called vasal gel that stops the sperm in that tube, the vas deferens, as I mentioned, and lasts 10 or more years and is non-hormonal, potentially 10 or more years, um, based on a similar one called RISUG that was developed in India. Um, we, kn we know that data because men have been using that safely for a number of years. There's also a method similar to the one that's been in the press but developed uh, originally at King's College in London that also, uh, that is a pill and is short acting. Um, it's called the clean sheets pill and I'll leave that to your viewers to put two and two together what that means. <laughs> um, and you, you asked about demand. That's been one of the big barriers is people have thought that men are not interested but times have changed. Maybe the men who were in power in the 1980s and 1970s and 60s when female contraceptives were developed were not interested. But men have a lot more responsibility now and are looking for some control to go with that responsibility. Sure. So in, yeah. In fact, there are, are, are over 18,000 men on the, on the list to hear about the clinical trials for the vasal gel method. I want to get to that, but briefly I want to go back to the research. As I understand it, scientists use something called knockout mice. And I was hoping that you could explain yeah. to the audience what what that refers to okay so what that means is they have gotten rid of the function of a particular gene and they've produced mice genetically engineered that don't have that gene so whatever that gene was going to do these mice won't be able to do so it's very nice but it's a long way from use in humans the next thing that needs to happen is you need to find a drug that can affect that gene so because you don't want to go genetically modifying humans, not, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Right. So um, now once you find a drug, which you can do by something called high throughput screening, where you test thousands and thousands of different molecules, then you have to see whether it's safe, which is a long process, which is why at the Male Contraception Information Project we say, hey, let's look at the work that's already been done and is in more advanced stages. It's been tested in animals. We know it works in some larger animals, not just mice, maybe rabbits or monkeys. 
some of the methods we know work in humans and are in fact based on drugs, side effects of drugs that have been around for a long time. Sure, like and, we, should, and, and we definitely should explore that. But mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you one more question before we go, because we only have like a minute left. Uh, you yeah. know, even if scientists and doctors can work out the biology, which I'm sure this isn't going to happen for a few more years uh, at, yeah. the very at the very least, um, it's more than likely that you know some men will find this this idea sort of emasculating. Uh, you know, how challenging do you anticipate it to be getting males to sort of open up to the idea of taking birth control, or do you think there's enough demand there that you know it's not that challenging? I think that there are enough men that not everybody's going to be interested, but the men who are are very passionate. And it depends what you offer men. If we offer something that's as lousy as what women currently put up with now, yeah, men are not going to be interested. But there are some better options out there. And I think, and a lot of men think as well, that we should be pursuing them. Indeed. Some of it is very lousy. <laughs> Thank you so much, <laughs> Elaine Listener, Director of the Male Contraception Information Project. You're welcome. Thank you.